Well, Chuck, thanks very much, sir, for joining us on the program. Good talking to you tonight. Always a pleasure, Kim. And we have a, a new development in the long-running uh, saga of the Nordyke case out in California. What can you tell us about this? Well, this case has been going on for for forever, more than 10 years now. Wow. And uh, uh, Don Kilmer is the lead attorney on this. NRA has been supporting it through various ways substantially for, for pretty much as long as it's been going on. Uh as part of its uh, legal action project out here in California, uh, the Nordic case and a number of other cases, Nordic case challenges a ban on the possession of firearms on county property in the county of Alameda. What it was really trying to do was ban the Alameda County gun show that the Nordic family ran. Um, I couldn't even, I mean, the, 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 the procedural history on this case is uh, they're going to teach civil procedure classes in law school on it, how it's gone through all the different courts. It's been almost in front of the, the United States Supreme Court, I think twice at this point. And it was most recently, um, and, and since it's been in court, Heller and McDonald have come down. So it keeps getting bounced around as new cases come down, and those two cases were obviously uh, big procedural, you know, uh, presidential cases. So uh, the most recent ruling out of the three-judge Ninth Circuit panel actually set up a standard of review for uh, Second Amendment challenges. And if you'll remember, that was, that's one of the, the hotly contested issues right now is what the standard of review is going to be when, when the NRA or another, anyone challenges a, a uh, state law or local ordinance based on, or federal law based on a Second Amendment violation. Mm -hmm. And what the Nordic three-judge panel did was say, that there's a sort of a substantial burden test akin to uh, tests that are applied when you're challenging a restriction on abortion. And there's a lot of disagreement about whether or not that's an, an the appropriate test. So uh, the Nordics appealed, uh, in a sense, they, they requested review by the entire Ninth Circuit. In other words, there are around 25 judges on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal Three sit on your your generally sit on the appellate panel if the case is significant enough to merit review uh, it has some unique issue then they can do what's called on banc review which is the review by twelve twelve of the of the uh, Ninth Circuit justices rather than three and so the Nardikes asked for on banc review and it's rarely granted, but in this case it was signaling that the that enough of the justices on the Ninth Circuit recognize that the the legal issues being raised in this case are significant and and warrant them paying much closer attention. Interesting. All right. So what? What again? I mean, now that this case has been going on for uh, over a decade, uh, I, I guess we shouldn't expect a. Uh a speedy conclusion, but when this goes back for an on banc review, I mean, how long does that typically take? Well, there's an oral argument scheduled for March. We don't know the exact date yet, but it will be sometime in March. And and typically, uh, this is an open question, a lot of times there's no additional briefing. Uh, in other words, the briefs that were submitted in the, to the three-judge panel, mm -hmm. the, the en banc panel just reads those briefs, so there's no more briefs that need to be done. If there are, the NRA is already committed to doing additional, submitting additional amicus briefs, and obviously the Nordikes will submit their own briefs. But a lot, uh, often on these on banc reviews, they just go on what's already in the record. They look at what the three-judge panel looked at and make their decision. In the Ninth Circuit, uh, uh, we've already got a, NRA and CRPA have already got several amicus briefs in there uh, on the Nordike case, arguing about standard of review and arguing about some of the other uh, less central but still very important issues in the case. All right. Well, listen, Chuck, I'm glad you could uh, join us for this update here. We'll be following the case uh, uh, as we get ready for oral arguments in March. But thank you so much for your time today, sir. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, the, the, the Supreme Court is dealing with cases that have been up for, for review in front of it for the last several days, and it's denying review in most of those cases. So the, the, the trend right now, uh, the, the Ninth Circuit en banc is one step under the United States Supreme Court. There are... Uh, I think only one or two Second Amendment cases 
in front of the Supreme Court asking the Supreme Court for review right now. They will be decided on within the next couple of weeks. And then we'll get another batch of cases, which Nordyke might be one, Peruta, several others from across the country, the Chicago CCW cases. Those are all what you're watching here is the evolution as all these cases make their way to the United States Supreme Court, and then we see which one the Supreme Court takes. Looks like they're looking for a clean case because they've shot down most of them so far. They're looking for a clean plaintiff with clean facts uh, to, to, to expand on the Heller and McDonald decisions. All right. Uh, any idea, Chuck? I mean, I guess now we may be getting into uh, uh, you know pure conjecture at this point, but uh, would you say, for instance, the Peruta case would uh, meet that definition of a clean case? I think the Peruta case is a clean case. Both of the, 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 the cases in Chicago, the Chicago CCW cases are clean cases. You know, the, the, uh, a lot of times these criminal defendant cases uh, are making their way up, and it looks like the Supreme Court is, is, is most, for the most part not taking those. So, uh, you know, these civil cases are pro- probably have a better chance. And, uh, you know, obviously this is reading tea leaves. Right. But, but, this, but the, the biggest uh, sign that the Supreme Court is interested is that when you typically when you ask the Supreme Court, you petition the Supreme Court to review your case by granting a writ of certiorari, the court denies those out of hand. And they don't even ask for... Uh, an opposition brief from opposing counsel on why they shouldn't take the case. Uh, and, and a smart lawyer uh, faced with uh, someone on the other side of the case who's asking the Supreme Court to hear their case won't even submit a brief in opposition because it only serves to to raise the profile of the case. So mo- because so many are denied just out of hand. But when the Supreme Court really has an interest in the case, they will actually ask the opposing counsel to submit a brief about why they should not take the case. And on most of these Second Amendment cases, we are getting an order from the Supreme Court telling the opposing counsel to submit a brief saying why they shouldn't take the case. When they take that extra step, Mm -hmm. it means they're interested. It means they're looking very closely at these cases and considering each one for review. So... They're looking, they're waiting, and, and it's inevitable that they're going to pick one uh, sooner or later. All right, Chuck, Michelle, thank you so much sir, for the analysis, and I uh, look forward to talking again soon. My pleasure, Ken. Chuck, Michelle, California civil rights attorney, joining us here on NRANews.com.